Hello everyone, here I am again. Uh, well, Isaiah 11, <coughs> excuse me, Isaiah 11, 13, 14, not so much 12 maybe, that general area of Isaiah, it's all, it's all here on us right now. The, and, uh, You know, everyone's misconception of what's really going on is just, well, it's all over the board, you know, from people still preaching rapture to what have you and whatnot. And it's, uh, it's a little out of control, actually. And uh, it doesn't seem like there's really much more time to really warn anybody. They're just going to have to realize the hard way that they were wrong. Um, these nations that won't get rid of their idol, you know, their statues of liberties and their uh, Washington monuments and uh, Mount Rushmore's and the uh, all the flags of all these countries and all these Buddhas and whatnot. It's going to be the downfall of every nation that still has these idol things in every household that in every neck, in every leash, in every collar. See what I mean? Um, the human race won't separate themselves from the, this ideology, idolatry, um, everyone's in love with their possessions and their riches and whatnot. And no one can separate themselves from these things, their, their crosses and their stars and whatnot. And, uh, well, since you couldn't do that for yourself, it's going to be done for you. I think you'll read about that in Psalms and Proverbs all throughout the, you know, so, uh, I'll try not to laugh when calamity overtakes you, but see, since you weren't able to separate yourself from these things, they're going to be separated from you and uh, like a whirlwind because well you, you couldn't take the simple this artwork and whatnot it's just a porthole that opens up your mind to things that are ungodly and it doesn't matter if you're looking at the Sistine Chapel it doesn't matter what you're really looking at there's there's no such thing as holy images and holy statues and whatnot and so you know, the whole world's about ready to get shaken. People really need to learn that if they don't destroy these things for themselves, these things will destroy them. And, uh, well, I don't expect the human race to just cooperate, so we all know how it's actually gonna go. And, uh, well, if you can't separate yourself from these things, let's hope that you'll get separated from them without too much consequence to your own flesh organism, right? You know what I mean? And uh, hopefully your precious little artwork and whatnot isn't something that results in you dying uh, because you value earthly treasures. It's gonna cost you because you couldn't separate yourself from these things. It, it, it's permanent. It's, you know, the damage to your eternal soul it will be permanent because you valued these things when our Heavenly Father made it abundantly clear that you should separate yourself and have nothing to do with these things. Old Testament, New Testament, Quran, doesn't matter. You should have that written on your heart and because you don't means that you're just a father, you're, you're a child of the, of the father of lies. That, that the Almighty Creator, our Heavenly Father, it is is not your Father. Um, and so, well, that's all going to happen here soon. The, my last video, the badges, that, that idol image is, is probably one of the worst. The, with the eagle on top of the crest, or the star, or however they decided to identify themselves. Because it's the one that's been pushing its power and authority on people. But really, to tell you the truth, whether you're aware of it or not, those things within your household, those things within your church, those things within your country are what our Heavenly Father despises. 
and uh, it doesn't matter if Jesus is hanging off your cross or there's just a cross there that's a it's a death torture contraption and there's there's nothing glorious about what happened to our Savior that day on the cross or on the tree and since you Christians and you Jews with your stars and whatnot, you guys, you know, your your crucifixes and your, your Mother Marys and stuff, you're gonna, it's, the consequences are coming down, you know? And, uh, well, if there's no police force, then there'll be some anarchy and some stealing and people living by the sword and dying by the sword and, and uh, this should all be taken care of pretty quickly because, you know, Isaiah 14, 13, 14, somewhere in there, it's like the survivors will be more rare and more scarce than pure gold. See what I mean? There'll be more pure gold than there will be people that live through this. Those who are on the narrow path, they'll survive this. Daniel 3, Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego, no idle things, no earthly treasures love one another, forgive one another, share with one another. Don't sit there and let someone starve to death. If you have a bite to eat, share it. There will always be enough for you, or there won't be, because you couldn't. Fishes and loaves it, because you couldn't share. So, uh, all of us who get through this will get through this together, and most of us just won't get through this, because your heart wasn't pure. And that's a lot of you preachers out there. Your day in the fire is coming and your heart hasn't been pure. Some of you specifically, I've been knocking on your door to purify your heart for two years and you just, you're just hell bent on going to hell, aren't you? Seems that's obvious, pretty obvious. Unable to hear the truth. Just too much of a coward to stand up for what you believe to be the truth, so it's just not. If the truth was on your side, you'd be fearless like myself, see? I can go to sleep at night. No worries. I spent a couple days in the, this pit, viper pit full of venomous snakes. I slept just fine. Nothing bit me. I've, hand, I've held hands with the devil. Nothing happened to me. The devil obeys me. The, uh, the devil respects me. The evil that's in you, that's not the devil. See what I mean? That's just humans being evil. And you all need to stop blaming everything on the devil when it's your actions that are to blame. Okay? When I got the... Iron Scepter in the Morning Star, do you think anything can touch me or anyone that I'm looking out for? No, nobody at the round table has anything to worry about. Yet they're still too afraid to even mention my name. How could you even read through Isaiah and Jeremiah and Ezekiel without and still be afraid to mention my name? Why, why are people who are guaranteed eternal life why are they still afraid? What are they afraid of? At least the number six, the one, the only one that deserves to sit straight across the table from me, the only one that has the guts to look me in the eye, she wasn't afraid to mention my name, and she's the only one at the round table. And then we have Ebony, which was the example for everyone. There's a few reasons why Ebony's not at the round table. Part of it is because, well, she has seven children that will always be provided by, by myself. She's got it good. She's got nothing to worry about. Her family has nothing to worry about. It's all the rest of you, oh, except for the number six. She's good, because she's not a coward. I don't know why the rest of my family won't even, are too afraid to mention my name. Have you noticed? Actually, I've noticed this most of my whole life. Everyone's pretty much afraid to mention my name. And no matter how good I've been to people, trying to offer them true eternal life, not that John 3.16 crap that Christianity and your Bible sells you, but true eternal life, like John 
Like you have to follow his words and keep his words and stay on the narrow path to have eternal life. You can't just believe in something, John 3.16, and not be on the narrow path. You can preach John 3.16, you can preach Jesus all day long, and he's going to say, go away from me, for I know not who you are. And I have that same right here in the kingdom of heaven, see? If you, so if you go to heaven, or you stay here on earth, or you just go to hell, it doesn't really matter to me. You kind of have to get past me or Christ, and it's the, the rules are the same. They apply, see what I mean? Here, down here, I have Christ in me and the Father in me. So all that is in me is more than it is in this world. And I'm not really going out of my way to do too many favors to, to, for too many people because, well, I've proven that just backfires in your face. So you pretty much have to get on board with this information that I'm passing out is a life and death thing and if you're too afraid to pass it out well then you are going to die and there's nothing that can be done about that and there ain't no relationship with Jesus that you have that's going to get you through that because you were too much of a coward in the final hour the final hour of the whole history of humanity is right here upon us and you're going to be a coward our Heavenly Father put you down to be here in this hour and what are you afraid of? The devil can't do anything unless I give him permission, folks. It's been that way since 2017, and you guys all just have cognitive dissonance. I've explained it to you and proven it to you. Like I told my Heavenly Father, you want me to go talk to these people? You send a plague. Yeah, I didn't open my mouth until the plague showed up. I needed to make sure that he was talking specifically to me and I wasn't just, you know, understanding it wrongly or incorrectly or something like that. So anyway, I realize that it's tough for you all to have the faith that I might have because, well, the whole Old Testament wasn't written about you. It was written about me. Even Christ had less to work with when he was dealing with his own personal situation there wasn't very much written about Christ kind of like there wasn't written anything about Joseph kind of like there wasn't written anything about Noah see what I mean these it was written about them after the fact not before there wasn't some prophecy letting us know that David would come and kill Goliath see all the prophecy was always about me everything else is, was written about these men after the fact see I have the complete advantage like 3,000 years worth of information there about me before I ever got here to study so I know I, you know, have everything worked out, right? Plus my relationship with my Heavenly Father. I mean, I told you over like a year ago, I don't just have the winning hand. He gave me the whole deck. I'm the one dealing the cards. You see? And these world leaders that have been warned and warned and warned what world leaders, see what I mean? We're about there, where we're gonna be scratching our heads going, what were those things? We can't even barely remember, what were they? Yeah, there are no more world leaders. They just all had to die because they just wanted to remain deaf. Or they just believed in Darwinism and that I was bluffing that, that there isn't such a thing as God. And God didn't tell you this stuff and give you like 2,000 years to put it into use and apply it and figure it out. And, you didn't care because your hearts aren't pure so you're gonna die you're only gonna survive this if you have a pure heart which you know most of you youtubers have proven to not have a pure heart because you're not going out of your way to help your flock your congregation you're always busy spilling out the same beans towards me that I don't really need like I was saying before all of you put together have nothing to give me really see what I mean I have a straight connection to our Heavenly Father so the lies and the and the beans that you guys are selling I don't need it maybe you should spend some time reflecting upon what I actually say to you and apply it to yourself and quit trying to tell me that I shouldn't be able to fall asleep at night because the boogeyman is gonna get me you see both serpents and the beast Listen to what I say. You guys are slaves to something for no good reason because what? You're afraid? I 
think the last time I paid taxes was like 2006. You know, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Like, I, you're just slaves and you want to stay slaves. Like, Moses can't, can't beg the Israelites to leave Egypt. You're too bonded to it. And so, well, you're going to perish. When I was down in Dallas, I tried to rescue one, one, one American from the fire. And I couldn't even pull that off. They'd rather just stay here and burn. You see what I mean? So I decided to do a U-turn. I'm back up here on the goat farm for a little while. I miss the smell of goat being on me. I'm tired of smelling like inner city garbage. Which, actually, to tell you the truth, hanging out with the homeless people was very rewarding, eye-opening. It was a wonderful experience. I got to enjoy it. Um, most of the people, no matter how messed up they are, they really actually do have a pure heart. Unlike all the rest of you in society, they're just blind, deaf, and dumb.